Silent Hill. He may never leave you alone again for PlayStation from Konami. Give me both. Is that better? Yeah. Silent Hill, the short message. Oh dear. I think you know what time it is, gang. That's right. There's a new Silent Hill demo short game thing, which could only mean it's time for fuck Konami news, because of course it's fucking shit. Wrong lever! All the news that's made you fit to say fuck Konami this. Silent Hill short message arrived out of nowhere and impressed basically nobody when it reared its embarrassing head as a demo come short game a la PT. Actually no, I shouldn't say that. This second banana nonsense might desperately try to mimic PT in a perverse pantomime of viral horror, but it is nothing more than just that, the mummery of perverts. It's only saved the disgrace of insulting a formidable horror series because said series couldn't spare the shame to feel the slight. If anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him! Despite not being developed by Blue the Team, shit message nonetheless luxuriates in the trauma of its imaginings, inflicted on characters whose mental health issues are laid on lurid display for the curious tourist. My mother yelled at me! Indeed, friend and colleague Laura Kate Dale rather nailed it when she called it trauma tourism. So vapid is Shroop Magi's presentation of mental health issues, so asinine are its blundered attempts at meaningful commentary. I had to check to make sure the reckless minds behind the medium weren't behind this thing. But make no mistake, this mockery of Silent Hill isn't offensive. Well, not offensive for its thematic content anyway. It's tasteless, tacky, it's vulgar as all heck, but I struggle to be upset by something so utterly fucking shallow. It's borderline funny, it's so pathetic. And that's before we get to the hilariously goofy monster I've come to know and love as <laughs> So anyway, what's the story with this miniature travesty? Well, Silent Hill Shop Morang stems from some concept art that was floating around a few years back, featuring a girl surrounded by and embedded with various cruel insults, one of which caused the belief that a new Silent Hill would take place in the UK as it was a nation-specific pejorative menga. Silent Hill Shart Massage is not based in the UK, but is in fact somewhere else. This somewhere else has a name that I can't be bothered to remember, as I can't any of the names of the characters, because it's so ungripping, almost as forgettable as Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Eh, it's alright. Anyway, place is a shithole, like eerie so it might as well be set in the UK. It's a rundown town that failed to rejuvenate twice thanks to poor timing with the 2008 economic fuck up and the 2020 COVID fuck up. Though of course any social commentary is largely left unattempted with real world events providing merely the window dressing of culturally relevant sentiments. Another wacky fact about spooky Ogdenville is that its kids are miserable, neglected and fucking love to kill themselves. Our protagonist, a girl with cinematically negative self-esteem, has been texted by a young 
artist friends called Maya and told to meet at her studio. Oh shit, I remembered a name. Anyway, we explore this dingy shithole of a crap sack while picking up documents, finding Maya's graffiti art, and getting live action flashbacks of Maya prattling on. Eventually, you come to what we'll call the Minga Room, where notes full of insults are accompanied by voice chatter full of insults. It's scary? Are they going for scary? Fuck knows. Anyway, at some point during all this, you get chased by a truly dumb fucking monster that made me laugh my goddamn head off when I first saw it wobbling its way towards me like a mildly threatening inflatable wacky arm guy. Turns out Anita, the protagonist whose name I just saw while reminding myself of this unmemorable tripe online, is trapped in a loop, oh my god, just like PT, where she gets to relive her experiences of online harassment and abuse for our salacious pleasure. Turns out May is already dead despite texting and a half-baked twist lifted straight from Silent Hill 2 and Anita can't kill herself over it because when she tries, she just loops back. After it indulges in each suicide attempt, the game flashes up a solemn block of text, telling audiences to reach out if they feel as bad as this game is sure to make them, you know, like how episodes of EastEnders would put the Samaritan's phone number at the end of a really depressing episode. I'd say the use of these text screens were a cynical attempt on the part of the devs to cover their asses, but part of me hesitates, wondering if all this is born of pure naive fumbling, and maybe hearts were in the right place, it's just that place was very far away from the part that thinks. Oh, also Anita stole a letter that Maya wrote to another friend out of jealousy, turns out Maya was bullied at school and desperate for help, but Anita was jealous of Maya and the other friend who I think was called Emily and hid the letter but now believes herself to be the cause of Maya's suicide. Cue more suicide. It's soon time for playable child abuse as you learn how neglectful, resentful and hateful Anita's mum is, which is actually not too far from my own experience with caregivers in my life except they didn't perform melodramatic monologues about how I gave them cursed pussies and stuff. Anita's brother died after being locked in a closet and had his body stuffed in a fridge. Moving on. Heavy Petal comes back, chases Anita through a maze and this is where it's perfect perfectly valid to stop playing and look up the rest of the game on YouTube because not only are you basically at the end, the final chase is a bunch of eight pages bullshit and if there's one overdone horror trope I want to see the fucking back of, it's running around a visually confusing area, not designed for those with memory issues, collecting an assortment of bullshit scattered around while chased by a monster that could only become less scary even if it was scary to begin with because it's so constantly presently harassing you while you're trying to essentially tidy up that any fear or mystique sloughs away to leave only fucking annoyance and a sense of wasted time if you collect a bunch of shit and then get caught and have to start again. Fuck off you slender wanker! And as I calm down from that, let me end the synopsis. Turns out Maya liked Anita too, but Anita is sorry she done a naughty and contemplates killing herself for old time's sake, but doesn't instead, and so all the spooky Silent Hill adjacent chicanery stops. Later, Anita and Emily go off to college, leaving us to only imagine the kind of hilarious, saved by the bell the new class scrapes they will be getting themselves into. As an experiencer of multiple mental illnesses that mirror a lot of what's portrayed here, I've never been so confused by a paradox of artistic interaction. I've never felt a gut punch so hard that somehow also missed. I guess it punched the wall next to me. Its presence made me flinch, but ultimately it meant it accomplished, it struck nothing. Nothing that felt it. Nothing it aimed at. Silent Hill short messing is transparent in its aping of other products and attempted thematic resonance, but fails both as its own independent psychological horror, as a spiritual successor to PT, as an exploration of mental health, and as a Silent Hill game. Wait, that's four things. Four things can't be a both. What's both for four things? Froth? Quoth? Fourth? Quadrosil? Could I say it fails Floth as a spiritual successor to PT, as an exploration of mental health, and as a Silent Hill? Anyway, the point is shut up Zilla, I don't drag jokes on too long, that's what you do, just like that YouTube comment said you do. Hello, could somebody let me out of here please? I am hungry and bored. Is that Mitch Hedberg in a leather apron? Comedic response to whatever Zilla just said. Anyway, enough about how much my co-editor drags on their jokes. <laughs> Which one? Let's look at how Silent Hill Stork Muskets fails on all Quadraseal points. As a spiritual successor to PT, it falls short for a few reasons, but it's a pale retread first and foremost, where PT genuinely came out of nowhere as an innovative new way to announce a video game, being the stealth prelude to a new Silent Hill game as it was, that novelty value isn't here for Stinky Rupert, and no, I'm not even trying with the names anymore. Not only does it lack the surprise connection to Silent Hill or shock appearance of Nemus Rodan, its loop-based gameplay lacks 
the elegant simplicity and the horrific intimacy that P.T. wielded so effectively. The loop is vaguely established and the samey environment too indistinct to take advantage of it. As will be a problem in every aspect of its quadrasil of failings, Stout Mingus lacks the subtlety of its forerunner. Its gleeful rush towards stylized depictions of mental illness throws pacing and build out the window and it reveals its mysteries with something approaching pride in its own cleverness. Undeserved pride, let me make that clear. And of course there's no Hideo Kojima involvement, his bitter departure from Konami shortly after the announcement of Silent Hills already set Shite Mantis on an uphill struggle, but to do such a crummy job with such a tough act to follow really is a pity. As an exploration of mental health, I think I've already made the case here, but yeah, this is trauma tourism, it's trauma porn. A fun house ride through various issues far too complex to be reflected by a cutscene of a girl freaking out while poorly acted voices yell ugly at her. There's a lot to be said about how a game can represent things like CPTSD, dysmorphia and the negative impact social media interactions can have on mental health, but rather than genuinely explore any of that, Shrike Malified merely acknowledges its existence and only insofar as it can provide drama for the scary game about scary brains. By glossing over the concept it exploits, Silent Hill doesn't dive into themes above its head with the same kind of churlish recklessness that Bluebeer historically has, so I guess it's got that going for it. It's not out here telling traumatised people they're broken forever but for a bullet to the brain, or using abuse to try and evoke sympathy for pedos, it merely stops at using mental illness for horror purposes, the commoner garden crutch of scare flavoured media. Still, it does so with such ham-fisted clumsiness. I definitely thought it was Bluebeer at first, even if it doesn't quite reach a level of stupidity that borders on malice. As a Silent Hill game, it just fucking isn't. Look, Silent Hill 2 may be my favourite game, but I won't say it's perfect. Some of its depictions of mental health aren't exactly sensitive, but they're at least attempted with some of that golden word. Subtlety. In general, I still greatly love the imagery and allegory of Silent Hill 2, how its themes are baked into every aspect of the experience, from background lore to environmental details to enemy design, and it is baked in. It's not layered thickly on top. Schlomp Mistip, terrified its audience might not get it, spells everything out with no ambiguity, no room for interpretation, no allegory, metaphor, simile to be found. Despite not looking, sounding or playing like Silent Hill, it nonetheless tries to pull from its pedigree at every turn. From repeating twists to attempting the same themes to some familiar imagery, Sherma Sherj approaches Silent Hill exactly the same way it approaches mental health. You get barely the cliff notes in a whirlwind tour. It's reminiscent of all those shitty Souls-like games. The new Dark Souls was popular but didn't know why, so they stripped it down to its most fundamental and reductive elements. And that's what they've done with Silent Hill. I don't think this game knows what it's doing. This leads to discussing how it fails on its own as a horror game, and really that's just down to a culmination of everything else we've discussed. Ultimately, it's an also-ran first-person horror that wouldn't have stood out if not for its connection to Silent Hill, something it seems to know, for it sure as shit didn't hide that connection like P.T. had the luxury of doing, walking slowly through corridors, being yelled at, running away from clown comic monsters, and suffering through eight pages bullshit is stuff you can do in a hundred hundred drum horrors now. It's a mediocre game even among mediocrity and it just isn't scary, not creepy. It is at times funny, but that's the only feeling it evokes, other than just sadness at its existence and its place in the world. But hey, it's free, right? Why give it such a hard time? Well, I can't make it clearer by now how much I love Silent Hill, or rather, loved Silent Hill before Konami slit its throat, scooped its guts out through the hole and propped the hollow carcass up on Salvador Dali-style crutches for the Kronamis to peck at. That this comes out daring to bear the Silent Hill name is a troubling glimpse at the future of Silent Hill. Not that it had a future to begin with, but it had a past. It was a horror series that once deserved to be seen as a cut above because it was the kind of meaningful psychological horror other games weren't doing. This weak ass mockery of PT, hard to tell apart from a dozen PT ripoffs cavorting around on Steam, reinforces the attitude of Konami's cash-in era, where it insists on squirting out the cheapest, dirtiest, sleaziest bastardizations of its franchises. It also continues the publisher's track record of releasing pale mockeries of once promising things, like Metal Gear Survive, Short Circuit Here is another game based on a beloved series, as well as one related to Kojima that misses the fucking point and doesn't fucking care. That's Konami now, not that you need me to 
just say it, it doesn't fucking care. This release confirms it, well, continues to confirm it, it corroborates. It also does very much the opposite of instilling faith that Bloober Team's take on Silent Hill 2 won't be cringe-inducing trauma porn playing with sensitive material it's not qualified to touch like everything else the studio makes. I mean, Konami literally just showed us that the series ain't above that, but what can we expect from a company that's allowed terrible movies, an embarrassing bunch of comics, a scummy pachinko machine, sleazy monetized cutscenes, and Silent Hill Homecoming to drag the series name through the mud. Konami itself made things plain when it put out that announcement video dedicated to all the ways in which they plan to suckle Silent Hill until its nipples turn to stone. Meaningless games shat out, thrown out on all platforms, merchandise up the wazoo. Milky milky, drippy drippy. Milk milk time. So anyway, that's why I did a video slagging off a free glorified demo of fuck all. Well, that was fuck Konami news, I guess. All the news that's fit to make you say fuck Konami. Um, I guess it was also sort of a review. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, despite the fact that, as I said, it's a free demo, it's worth slagging off because it's more or less a declaration of intent. Uh, it's Konami putting its seal of approval, not that that counts for shit, uh, on a game with the Silent Hill name that is a load of... <sighs> Bloober trauma porn wank. So, well, I guess that's about it. Thank God for me and all that. Uh, bye. Boy! That's not, no, that's not that. Oh, wow, no. No. Back, back, back. See, I can do bony. And bird feed me. I can do the thing upstairs and all. But I can't do back. Thank you.